from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. If you brought your Bible, open it up to Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 6, or inside your bulletin you'll find a little sheet of paper that has the scripture for this morning. And also you could turn to our PowerPoint and you can follow along with me. I'll read one verse, you will read next verse. We will alternate the reading together and on the verse 6, we will read it together. So Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 6. If you're ready, let me know by saying amen. 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 Here we go. Verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Enoch was taken from his, this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Bow your head with me quickly. Father, we have your words open in front of us. We pray that you will come and speak to us and let us know what we need to know. And especially, God, at this hour, come and answer our prayers. Thank you so much. In Jesus' precious and in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you're glad to be here, give me a shout of amen. amen. If you're really glad to be here, give me a shout of hallelujah. If you're truly glad to be here, give me a shout of praise the Lord. 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 And it's Father's Day. One desire that as a pastor, as your pastor, and for all the fathers out here, is that, that you be continue to be a faithful fathers in your homes and to your children, to your spouses, that you will continue to be faithful fathers you know this time and age and the days we, it's hard to find good godly fathers when we look around in, in, in different parts of the country and in demographics and homes we find that many families are broken families and many children are being raised by single mothers and many children are being raised by grandparents and it's hard to find good fathers around. That's why we need God in many of the families. We need God and so that these men can be godly and men can be responsible for their families and take care of them. It's unfortunate that we see so many broken homes and fathers abandoning their families and their children and their responsibility. In times like this, we need more godly fathers. Turn to the person next to you and say, we need more godly fathers. Amen? You know, in a way, in this world, we're surrounded by people. Wherever we go, and even look around our own circles of life, we are surrounded by people. And there are some people that we find in our own circle, uh, that who, people who are really uh, makes you happy. You know, in a way, you find someone, it makes you really glad to be around that person. But also, there's some people in, your, in our lives you don't want to be around. You know, somebody just shows up in the circle and you're dreading that that person is there. Whether he or she, you say, oh, I don't want to be near that person. I don't want to be where that person is. And so, we try to avoid that person. 
But yet, some people, when you go near, it brings smiles to your face. You're just happy to be there. When some, that person is there, you're glad to be there, and then your stress goes away. That person makes you smile and makes you happy. So let me ask you a question this morning. What kind of person are you to the people around you? You don't want to be a person that people don't want to see and dread. You want to be a person who can bring smiles to other face, other people. You, can, you want to be a person who can bring happiness to other people. And I think that's why comedians get paid very well. You know, a long time ago, there was a guy named Johnny Carson. You know, he brought smiles and happiness to so many people. But now, people like Jerry Seinfeld, David Letterman, Dave Chappelle, and Chris Rock. You know, all these guys, you know, bring s- smiles to people's face. And that's why they get paid so much. Norman Prinsky, I think, told me that he watches Running Man, a Korea, uh, you know, a Jewish American. He watches a, a Korean program called Running Man because he brings laughter to his face. You know, we watch many programs and things, and because it brings joy to our lives, we like people who can bring smiles, we can bring pleasing to our others. The Bible tells us we are made to please God. Amen? Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, you are made to please God. He made us. God made the people to please Him. God made us to worship Him. God made us to serve Him. Most of all, to please Him. What makes God happy? Seeing His faithful people worship Him. That's why verse, verse 6, it tells us, let's look at the verse 6. Verse 6, please. Let's read this together. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. We are made to please God. We were made to bring happiness to God. And, and that, what it takes, is faith. It is said, without faith, it is impossible. Impossible to please our God. And so, in order to please God, what does it take? It takes faith. It takes faith to please God. Turn to the person next to you and say, it takes faith to please God. Faith is what we need in this world. And especially for fathers and dads, it takes, we need more faithful fathers in our homes who will take the responsibility and carry out being a great fathers and husbands in this world. Why does faith matter? Faith matters because it controls our destiny. Whether you're faithful or not, it controls what's going to happen when you leave this world. Faith is what decides whether you are in hell or heaven, whether you're going to spend eternity with God or not. It takes faith, faith in Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Believing in Jesus Christ, believing in Son of God, will control our destiny. And so we need to be faithful men and women in this world. It controls our future. It controls our destiny. And so... We need to be faithful men and women of God. So this morning, I want to go over a few things about what is faith then? What is faith? Why is it, you know, you know we talk about faith so much in the church. Faith about God and faith in the Son of God. And so what is faith? Uh, you know, I, we really need to be sure about what faith is. You know, I Try to talk about same message sometimes over and over again to drill it into your head and let it stick in your head and so that you, you will not wonder that you will have a stronger and stronger faith. 
So what is faith? Take out the sermon outline as you came in inside your bulletin. There's a sermon outline that you can fill in. What is faith? Number one, faith is believing when I don't see it. Faith is believing when I don't see it. You can fill that in, in, in that blanks there. Believing and seeing. Faith is believing when I don't see it. Look at verse 1, please. Verse 1. Show us the verse 1. Let's read this together. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. You know, in this world, the people, people want to see. People say, show me. Show me first and I will believe. You got to show me first and then I, can, I, I will believe. But the Bible says, you don't have to see it. The Bible says, just believe it. Believe that there's God and there's His Son, His Son Jesus Christ. Believe it in His name and that you will be saved. You know, we got to touch it. We want to feel it. You know, anytime we buy a new car, what do we do? We go test drive. You know, we have to test drive it in order to buy that car. We just cannot believe that car and just go out and just give them the money and take that car. No, we don't. We got to test drive it. What do you do when you buy clothes at the uh, Macy's or other department store? What do you do? You got to try it on and, and try it out in, and before you buy it. You know, one of the most difficult things to buy, do you know what it is? It's watermelon. <laughs> Remember when was the last time you bought a watermelon? I mean, you know, they all look alike same. You know, the same color, nice. It looks really nice outside. But yet, it's most difficult thing is that it, what does it look like inside? So what do you do? You know, this is what I do most. Uh, because ever since I was a little, this is how uh, my grandfather and my father taught me. All you do is with your finger, knock on it. You know, the, uh, on the outside skin, you knock on it. And you hear the sound. And they, and, and they told me that certain sounds, the watermelon is ripe and it's good. Certain sounds, the watermelon is not ripe, it's bad. And so every time I go uh, to the uh, Sam's or Walmart and try to buy a watermelon, I knock on it, and then the one that sounds really good, I buy it. But yet, many times I have, you know, had a terrible time. Uh, one time I bought a watermelon. I, it really sounded good. I mean, just very clear sound, you know, very clear sound coming from that watermelon. When I took it home and opened it, it was all white. As a people, we want to see, we want to, you know, in order to believe, in order to believe that that is a good watermelon, we want to feel it, we want to touch it, we want, you know, we want some kind of assurance. Many people say, show me first and I will believe. But the Bible says, believe first. Believe first, there is God, there is a Son of God, there is Jesus Christ, that, that, that you got to believe in order to experience Him. That's what faith is. If you see it, then you don't need the faith. Isn't that true? If you see it, if you could already know, then you, that's not a faith. Faith is not, that's something that you don't see, something that you don't know, but believe, and that, and, um, that, and then miracles happen. Amen? Amen? This is what happens. This is what faith is all about. Jesus Christ, God, you know, I cannot see Him. I have never, you know, I have not touched Him. But yet, there's God that He exists. There's God who loves us and the God who cares about us. You know, you cannot believe, you know, you, when so you start believing in God, and then God starts to come into your life and start working in your life. Never seen Him. But yet, I, because I believe, I experience Him every day. Especially then during the difficult times, uh, the hardest times when you're hurting and when you're suffering. That's the time when God shows up and starts working in your life. 
The amazing thing is that God, you know, something that I can do it myself, but yet when I ask help from God, He comes into us and He begins to work amazing things and He brings in the miracles in our lives. That's the awesome power of God. That's the awesome power. You got to believe first, even though you don't see it, you got to believe first and then God starts to working in your life. Do you want new life? Do you want a better life? Do you want to experience power of God? Then start believing first. Start believing in first and then he will start working in your lives. We got to believe first even though we don't see it. We got to believe and then he will start working. You know, amazing thing. Abraham was one of those person, wasn't it? When God said, God told him to go to the land, I will show you, Abraham went. Even though he didn't see it, but yet he faithfully followed and went, and, 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 and he, he was blessed. He became a blessing to so many people. 39 years ago, when our family came from Korea to the States, I was 12 years old. Didn't know anything about America. You know, only thing I knew about was uh, from the pictures and the TV shows and things that I saw. But yet, we faithfully came to this country and God has blessed our family so much. And I truly say I'm so grateful that our family is here in this country. Didn't know about the country, but we came. We came faithfully. And he has blessed us and blessed our family. Number two on your sermon outline is this. Faith is obeying when I don't understand it. Faith is obeying when I don't understand it. Look at the verse seven. Uh, I, well, actually, verse seven in your outline, sermon outline, because it's not in. Okay, yeah. Let's look at verse seven, please. By faith, Noah when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Noah warned, and, and he built the ark, it says. I mean, it, God comes to Noah one day and says, there's going to be rain. You know, up to that point with Noah, there has, it never rained. It never, you know, he never seen rain before. No one saw rain. No one know what rain looked like. But yet, when God said there's going to be rain, it's going to be pouring down, he obeyed and built the ark. You know, faith is obeying when you don't see it, when you don't understand it. Faith is Obeying when I don't understand it. You know, the problem with us is that we try to understand it first. We try to know it, we try to feel it, we try to touch it. We got to understand it first in order to believe. But again, that's not what faith is. Faith is obeying to God's call, obeying to his command. And when God says, go, you go. God says, go and share, you go and share. God says, go show love, then you go and show love. That's what faith is all about. Obeying to God, obeying to the, uh, the Son of God, Jesus Christ in this world. Many Christians believe, yet some of us have a hard time obeying. When God says go, some of us wonder, not today, not yet. God says give, you say, no, not today, I don't have enough. When God says go and share love, we say, oh, not this is my, it's not the right time. Maybe tomorrow. We always try to put off instead of obeying and saying, yes, God, I will do it. Yes, God, I will follow, I will obey it. But yet we say, maybe tomorrow or maybe next day. This is the problem that we have in modern Christianity today. Some, even though we say, I believe in Jesus Christ I, I, and, I, and that He is my Lord and Master, but yet we don't follow, we don't obey. 
You know, sometimes we, some, we, even though we say we are Christians, and, but yet we, we just live according to our ways. If we feel like it, we obey. If we don't feel like it, we don't obey. If it doesn't meet my criteria, if it doesn't meet my uh, set of uh, thinking, then we don't obey. Let me tell you this. Faith is not something that you can pick and choose there's only one truth. One truth is that there's God and God who loves us and that He made everything, that God sent His one and only Son into this world and to that so that everyone can be saved. That's the truth. That's the fact. We live in an age where there's no truth anymore. Everything is relative. Whatever you think is right, that's right with you. Whatever you believe is what, you know, personally, that must be right. I'm sorry about Bruce Jenner, but yet, there's a man and women. What about that lady somewhere out there who says, she, even though she's born into a white family, she believes that she's a black. We live in an age where whatever we think maybe is right, it's not. It's very clear. It's very clear. Man, women, there's black, white, yellow, or Asians, and all of us, this clear. This world is getting a little crazy, I tell you. You could come out and say whatever you want to say and whatever you think you are, and then people, you have to accept it. The problem is that the, the newspaper articles about Bruce Jenner, people say, oh yeah, he's courageous, she's courageous now. But yet, when this woman came out and said, she's a, she, even though she's a white woman, she's born into a white family, and she says she's black, now they're criticizing her. Why is it double standard on some things? If everything is okay, everything is right, then everyone should be, you know, do whatever they want to do. But yet, certain cases, they pick and choose, and they say, that's wrong. There's only one truth. God is it. And that we're called to believe Him. We're called to serve Him and worship Him in this world. Faith is obeying when I don't understand it. Number three in your sermon outline is faith is giving when you don't have it. Number three in your sermon outline, faith is giving when you don't have it. Verse 4, please. Verse 4. Let's read the verse 4. Let's read it together. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings, when by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. Abel is a good example. He offered what God to God with from his heart and from the faith. And that's why God received Abel's offering, but God rejected Cain's offering that he offered through faith that you know, we find in a New Testament about a woman at the, at, at the, at the uh, temple and, and Jesus is sitting by and watching people give and here comes rich, rich people and they're just throwing down, you know, big cash and, you know, the money right at the play. But here comes an old woman, a very poor woman at that and then here she comes and she gives and gently and then she drops two coins, two copper coins into that and Jesus sees that and he commands this old lady, a poor lady, and saying that she gave her the, she gave the best. She didn't give much. But yet, what came out of from was that it came from her heart. And God accepted it and God blessed her. Sometimes we're afraid to give. We're afraid to help other people. We're afraid to love other people. But we are called to give, and we are to give and, and, and best as we can. That's what being Christian is all about. 
We look around ourselves and we see people who are hurting and suffering. That's what Christians are supposed to be there for, to help those who are in need, to help those who are suffering. That's what Christianity is all about. Because when we were hurting, when we were suffering, Christ came into our lives and He helped us and He guided us. And now it is our responsibility to go out and help those who are in need and who, those who are in hurting in this world. We need to give. We need to give more. We need to share what we have. You know, some of us, we are so very tight with, the, with what we have. We're not willing to open it up. In the faith is about opening it up and sharing with other people. So many of us, we only think about ourselves. And, oh, this is my retirement money. Oh, this is only for my son and my daughter. I cannot share. Oh, who, I don't need to share with other people. But yet, we're called to share. I tell you, we live in a greatest country. And many of you, you got it well made. But yet, you still think you don't have enough. Let me urge you. Take someone out to dinner. Out of the total people here in church, you pick up someone uh, that you don't know well, pick them out, take them out to lunch or dinner. Treat them well. And you'll be, you'll be amazed how this community will be a, become a great community. Instead of just eating by yourself and thinking... Take one of the kids out, you know, one of our high school students, take them out and, and buy them a lunch. When you see them at a restaurant or when you see them at the mall, take, you know, take them and, and go buy them at the uh, uh, Chick-fil-A or somewhere. That's what Christ called us to do. Love them. Love each other. We're so tight. But yet we're called to give and called to love more and more. If there's someone that you, you, you're grateful for in your life, someone who taught you something or someone who helped you something, then take them out and, and treat them well. Don't be so tight and don't be so, you know, only thinking about yourself. We're called to give and we're called to serve. That's why we went to Peru, to love them in the name of Christ. It's not something that, because, you know, I got so much money, I, got, I don't have any time to do, but we're, we're called to go, we're called to love, and we're called to serve. That's why we go. And I want to thank you for supporting the Peru Mission by buying things and uh, getting haircuts and, and getting your cars washed. But next time, even if you don't buy and those do that, maybe you could just take out your wallet and help those you know, different missions and different things. Even if you don't receive anything in back, just open up your wallet. Help them. We're called to love and serve in this world. And it takes faith. It takes faith to know that there's God. It takes faith. Faith is believing when I don't see it. Faith is obeying when I don't understand it. Faith is giving when I don't have it. I want to urge every one of you, not just the fathers, but everyone in this congregation right now, I pray that your faith will grow. I pray that you will have a bigger faith than where you are right now. I pray that you, your faith is an obeying faith. I pray that your faith is a believing faith, even though you don't see it. I pray that your faith is obeying when you don't understand it. I pray that your faith is giving when you don't have it. I pray that your faith will grow every day, one step up, 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 that you become to have mature faith in your life. Bow your head with me. Father, thank you so much for teaching us this morning. Thank you so much for loving us and caring about us. I pray that all my brothers and sisters who are here today, may their faith grow every day. May their faith grow stronger and stronger every day. Pray that because of their faith, that you will continue to bless them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
couple of things. I want to, I'm glad to see George Schaus here this morning. Welcome back, George. We're glad to have you this morning. But also, we're going to miss a family that will be leaving uh, our church. Uh, this is their last Sunday, and they'll be headed to, some of you know where Fort Lewis is in, uh, out there in Washington State. Uh, Murray family is going to be leaving us, and, and, and Colonel Murray is going to be uh, in, stationed in Fort Lewis, uh, so we're going to miss them. We just stand, uh, Murray family, you just stand, and uh, it's been a wonderful, has, how long has it been? About a year and a half? Two years, yeah. Two years they've been here. Uh, we're going to miss them. So we just stretch out your hands toward them. Let's bless them as they go. Uh, wherever they go, may they be the salt and the light of Jesus Christ in this world. May, wherever they go, may God guide them, protect them, watch over them, uh, that they will, God will open up their path and, and they, will be, uh, they will go and be the salt and the light and they will be the uh, uh, gospel sharers wherever they go. So let's pray. Uh, I'll pray as your hands stretch out to them. Let me pray for them. Father God, I thank you so much for... Uh, for the Murray family, God, Suzanne and Robert, I thank you for them, and I thank you for Isabel as, um, for the time that they were able to spend with us here at this church and being coming part of our family. Thank you so much for their lives. And against God, as you're leading them to a new place, uh, to a new uh, to place to live and serve, I pray that you will go with them, you will watch over them, protect them, keep them safe and keep them strong, and may they be the salt and the light in this world. May they go and share the love of Christ in the, wherever they are. May they be the light that, of Jesus Christ shines in this world, God. Protect them physically. Protect them spiritually, God. Watch over them. May they continue to become mature Christians wherever they are. Thank you so much for their lives, and thank you so much for the time we were able to spend together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray, and all the church people said, Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. I'll stand for our closing song this morning. your faithfulness oh great is your faithfulness you never change you never change you never fail oh God true are your promises true are your promises oh true are your promises you never fail, oh God. So we raise up, so we raise up, holy hands to praise the holy Lord. And the ones and this and this to go.
witness to God. And so we raise up holy hands to pray. So we raise our holy hands and to praise the Holy One and the ones and days in this to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now, great many and possible, this is by one body, one church, one congregation. We're going to head out into the world together and victorious together. Father God, we thank you so much for everything. We thank you for the faithful men and women of God in this world, God. Help us become mature Christians. Help us become better Christians, more faithful people of God in this world, God. Thank you so much. May the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, everlasting love of our God, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you as you're headed out into the world. May God bless every one of you. Amen.